Hi, I'm Penn Weichardt from Skylight Depot in Tucson, Arizona. We ship domes and complete curb mount skylights all over the United States. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us. Hope you find our instructional videos helpful. Thanks so much. Common question we get is, I have a broken skylight. Can I replace just the plastic or do I need a new skylight? Most of our customers still prefer to replace just the plastic and reuse their existing frame, but there are some scenarios where it makes sense to change out the frame as well, and some situations where it's required to, to go in with a new skylight. A situation where it would be required to swap out the entire skylight with the frame would be the outdated dome over frame styles. We see a variation of that skylight in Florida. We also see a different variation of the dome over frame in New York and in the Northeast. We also have some outdated vertical rise styled skylights where you may or may not be able to swap out just the plastic. We also um, have fiberglass skylights, which those skylights are commonly found in, in California, where the top frame is made of fiberglass and it's sealed to the plastic in such a way that it makes it very difficult to remove the plastic from that frame to reuse that fiberglass frame. And, you know, one of the, the last scenarios where you may want to consider changing out the frame is just if if over time it's weathered so bad and you know roofers and people have been up on your roof have kind of gone crazy with silicone or caulking and it's just too messy to to take apart and reuse so those are the situations where you're really going to want to swap out the entire skylight instead of just the plastic So if you need to replace the entire skylight with the frame, don't be intimidated. The, the thing about those situations is you already have 90% of the work done, meaning we're going to go into it in a moment, but you already have a flashed in roof, you have a curb built, so there's basically a box sticking up out of your roof that you're going to basically remove the old skylight from the box then you're going to cap the new skylight right over the box. So still a project that most homeowners can tackle on their own and, and a do-it-yourself project that shouldn't be too intimidating. So what is a curb mount skylight? So we'll start with in new construction when someone adds a skylight, they cut a hole in the roof, which is what we call the rough opening or the inside wood curb dimension, which is from the inside of the wood to the inside of the wood, which should match the hole in the ceiling. There's then an outside curb dimension, which is typically three inches wider than the rough opening. Your two by fours or two by sixes, which are typically used to construct the curb, are an inch and a half thick on each side when they're standing upright. On the inside of the home, to aesthetically make it pleasing, they typically put drywall or sheetrock along the inside so they can then paint that, what they call the skylight shaft, the area where the light shines in through the skylight and comes down through the, the shaft portion in the ceiling down to the inside of the home, bringing in light. On the outside, the installer typically uses an underlayment material and then they use a flashing material that goes under your roofing materials and up alongside the, the wood curb. That's to keep water from getting into where they, they cut this hole and build this box on your roof. So ultimately, there's a flashed in curb. All of that's done by the installer. The curb mount skylight is just designed to cap over the existing wood curb that's flashed in. And typically, every skylight manufacturer makes their curb mount sizes slightly different, but in general, they want to have about a quarter inch to a half inch gap of space 
wider than where the flashed in curb is. Let's just dissect this skylight one more time, close up view. So you got the top retaining frame, which again has outside dimensions from the retaining to retainer, not really that useful. You also have the opening of the retainer from retainer to retainer, which allows you to make sure that the bubble is gonna fit through it when replacing just the plastic. The retaining frame comes off. You've got these slotted screw holes that allow you to anchor into this portion of the skylight frame to assemble the top retaining frame to the base frame. You have two layers of plastic that are sealed and stacked together. And again, when replacing just the plastic, we measure from edge to edge, from edge to edge. And you've got your base frame, which again has your condensation gutter, which is, has the condensation on the inside and the outside. You have your rubber gasket that pushes down that the dome's sitting on. And again, gravity is typically forcing the water to one of the four corners where there's a little notch here that acts as a weeping system to let the water drain out onto the roof. And then when we flip that skylight upside down, we have what we call the mounting flange or max skylight frame dimension, which is from one side to the other side and from this side to this side to cap over the curb. So again, the mounting flange has to be bigger than the box that you're capping over. And then again on your curb, again, you have an inside curb dimension, which is what we call the rough opening, which is the opening of the frame, which is of the box, which is also identical to the hole that gets cut in the roof. And then you have the outside dimension of the curb, which is again, an inch and a half thick on each side of the two by six is standing upright brings you to three inches wider on the outside of the curb. And then again, you have to use a little bit of imagination, but there normally would be flashing that would go alongside the curb and then under the roofing material. And on the inside, you typically have drywall or sheet rock that's, that's kind of aesthetically pleasing on the inside. Putting it all back together, we got the base frame. Although I probably screwed this up. You got the domes. You got a retaining cap. Again, firm pressure goes down when you're putting this back together. You know, you don't need to, to you know, have it so tight that the plastic is going to break, but just a firm, firm clamp down when you're putting your retaining screws back in. So this is a curb mount skylight cut in half. I, I think it gives you an interesting view to kind of show you the inner workings of a curb mount aluminum frame skylight. So again, you have your retaining frame that's pushing down, squeezing the inner and outer dome together with the base frame. And you can clearly see in here that you have the condensation gutter on the inside. That's for any water and moisture that's coming up from the inside of the home. Well, and you also have this outer track here that's for any water that would seep in from where the plastic meets the aluminum frame. Gravity then forces the water to the corner where there's a punch or hole at each of the four corners. And if you flip the skylight upside down, you can kind of see how it's gapped right there in the corner. So you can see that's where the water's draining out. So again, gravity is pushing it to the corner. Also like the fact that you can see the outer dome is higher than the inner dome. They typically have an overall width and length that's the same. The lip, flat lip on the inner dome is typically just slightly wider than on the outer dome, which allows them to nest well together. And then you have your retaining screw that's holding the retaining frame to the base of the skylight, and then you have a pre-punched hole where you're using a corrosion-resistant nail or screw to hold it in place. Again, when you flip it upside down, this is what we call the mounting flange from from this metal to this metal. And that needs to be larger than the wood curb that's flashed in that you're capping over. And again, you're typically sealing this bottom part of your aluminum frame to the top part of the curb. So that's going right over the wood and sealing there.
let's talk about the material in the skylight. We're starting with the frame. So this is an aluminum extruded frame. In our example right here, this is our bronze anodized color. This one right here is your raw aluminum mill finish. I, I refer to it as just a silver metallic color. So aluminum in general, although both materials handle weathering very well, an aluminum curb mount skylight, the frame is made with extruded aluminum. Aluminum is great because it doesn't rust. However, it can corrode with certain weather. Um, the bronze anodized frame should have less corrosion than a mill finish frame, but they'll both, they'll both perform well. The mill finish is just a silver metallic color. A lot of it the, is just about pricing and aesthetics. So the, the bronze anodized, or if you went with a bronze powder coat, is more expensive than the raw aluminum mill finish. Really, it's about matching the colors on your roof if you can see the skylight from the ground, or if no one ever sees it, the mill finish, should be, the mill finish frame should work great for your project. I know in our replacement dome section, we talk a lot about colors of plastic. This particular frame is a bronze frame with a bronze over clear double dome in it. You could also do a mill finish frame with a bronze over clear dome in it. You could do a mill finish frame with a white over clear dome in it. Or you could just go bronze frame, clear over clear, mill finish frame, clear over clear. In the majority of most skylights, the white is on the outside and the clear is on the inside, but you can reverse it. We do see times where it's clear over white. Um, we do see very rare exceptions where it's white over white, and even more rare, a bronze dome over a white inner dome. But we can do whatever you need as far as the color of the plastic. So let us know what your variation is and we can do it for you. All of our skylights are gonna come standard with two layers of plastic in this framed skylight. It's what we refer to as a double dome, an outer dome and inner dome with foam tape between it, uh, which prevents the plastic from rubbing against itself. On a single dome skylight, you, you would go that route to save money. You would normally use a single dome skylight on a shed or a garage, but over most living portions where you're concerned with efficiency, the double would be the standard. In very extreme temperature environments, we can go to a triple layer, which is more expensive, but uh, if you need it, let us know. But again, it's not the norm. It's for extreme cold situations or really extreme hot situations where the double dome currently isn't performing the way you want it to. Dome material. Again, we have acrylic plastic and polycarbonate plastic. The main advantage of the polycarbonate material is impact resistancy. So if you're worried about something striking the skylight, a golf ball, hail, tree limbs, the polycarbonate material is worth the additional investment. But if you're not concerned about any of those things, both materials are equally excellent products. So you're not going to go wrong with one or the other. The only advantage of the polycarbonate material is impact resistancy. So again, we want to thank you for visiting our site. As, as you'll have learned from our instructional videos, there's nothing standard in the skylight industry. So half of our customers don't find what they're, the exact thing they're looking for on our website. I want to encourage you to use our contact form or call us, or even better yet, both. When you, when you call us, my name is Penn, P-E-N-N. -N. It's difficult to hear over the phone. I'm happy to help you. If I'm not available to help you, one of our wonderful associates is happy to be of service as well. I will say that, you know, we understand that you as a customer really want to understand what is my cost? What is this going to, what is this going to cost me? And we will absolutely try to get you there, but please humor us and allow us to ask you some simple questions that really help us understand what your needs are. The most important is obviously your name. We want to get to know who you are. Second, we want to know where you are in the United States. 
That location helps us identify what type of skylight you may or may not have or what you may or may not need. We also want to understand if it's for a residential home, a commercial building, an RV, a manufactured home, or if you're just using one of our domes or skylights for some kind of fun art project. Let us know what you're trying to do. We're happy to help. Uh, again, the contact form is helpful. Calling us, we're here to help. Let us know what we can do to be of service and win your business.